welcome to another episode of Woody's Roundup, the podcast that was created because we love podcasts and we want to pass the time in our 11, 12 hour trip to Florida because we drive from Virginia. So we made this podcast because we love podcasts and we love Disney podcasts. So we created one to help pass your time as you travel to your perfect Disney destination. I'm Laura and Woody's here. Reach, hey, reach for the sky. I knew it was <laughs> Every time. Every time. So I want to start off this podcast. Today we're going to talk about Animal Kingdom uh, and just a couple things about Avatar. The new additions. The new additions, things we love, things we saw, things we did. And then I'm also going to start off with a Disney do, a Disney don't, and a Disney dream. So, okay, Woody, my Disney do is do get a Mickey pretzel with cheese. Yes, and uh, the the pepper jack one is really good too. <laughs> I had that one for the first time this trip, and it was great. Had a little 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 bite to it, a little like you know sharpness to it. Um, yeah, get a Mickey's pretzel. Mm, I, I agree. It. My Disney don't would be don't let anything about. The progress, the wheel of the carousel of progress scare you. Get on that ride. Don't miss it. That's one of that's another episode because that is one of my favorite rides. That is a must do every time you go. And it is one that fills my heart every time I'm on it. That's a good one. And my Disney dream would be please build Pixie Hollow and make me feel like Tinkerbell. Yeah, I would love that. I'd be the creepy guy <laughs> waiting in line. <laughs> Listen, those are great movies. They are. I love those movies. I know. And they're well done. I don't know why they haven't made any more. And I think that, you know, if Disney is listening to this, I, I, one, we love you. Mm-hmm. Two, like that, they, they're great. I like, <laughs> like we would sit and watch them and like, you know, we're grown adults watching these and they're great movies. Yeah. So yeah, make more and make a land out of it because- I would love to go in and see the big, you know, the big stuff. Like yes. your, your little, yeah. So that's great. Those are great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're welcome. I mean, yeah. I see you, Tron. I see you, Tron. But come on, Pixie Hollow. Yeah. There's room. Totally agree. There's room. I like it. So we're going to talk about Animal Kingdom. And Animal Kingdom would be probably in line for me. Uh, definitely park number three as my top four parks as I have to rank them. Animal Kingdom comes in third. Huh. Okay. So we love Animal Kingdom. We definitely pick it for reasons other than just Avatar land. We have experienced that for the first time this year, 2019. We are excited to say we got to experience it both during the day and at night, nice. which was exciting. What is it? Is that the actual name? I know it's called Pandora. Pan- oh, okay. Yeah, so. Avatar land would have been good too, though. Oh, well, yeah. I guess I should call it by its. I don't even know. Name. No, I don't even know what the name of it is. That's fun. That's the funny part. Like, like we go there. You go to Animal Kingdom. I want to go to Pan. I I think Pandora, right. but like, like it's called the Valley of something. So I, I have no you, clue. Woody and I. If this is the first time you're listening in, Woody and I are your. Um, we're not. I would say we're not diehard Disney fans, but we love Disney. We're casual. I love Woody says casual uh park visitors no, we're, we're yes. once a yearers um and we just love all things disney now let me add this net now as far as like casual disney resort like disney parks yes yes now we have seen and love and have every animated yes uh disney animated movie mm-hmm. ever made yep and the sequels mm-hmm. i for one love the sequels Okay, so those we know, like we know, we're good with that. Now, the new stuff, like, I, like I don't know all the names in Star Wars, the new Star Wars. Like right. I don't know all the stuff, the original, yes, mm-hmm. and like uh, the Pandora Land. Like I, 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 all I know is there was like new rides there, and they were beautiful, great reviews, and we read about it. So if it's if it's a ride based off of an old animated movie, yes. We'll know every detail, you know, everything about it. Uh, some of this other stuff, I don't know. 
I don't, I don't we don't, you right, know, we're so casual. If, yeah, if you just want to like listen to the podcast and go, oh gosh, we can debunk everything they say, feel free. Please cause... email me and correct me <laughs> because I'm, I'm going to get the names wrong. I'm gonna, I'm but gonna... we have fun and we, we, we really do have Disney knowledge. We just, we just have a good time. We, we, we yeah. love, we love talking about Disney. We love discussing Disney. And so welcome, welcome to our podcast. So we visited Animal Kingdom on October, in the October months, super hot. Um, we love Animal Kingdom, one, because my favorite attraction is the safari. Yeah. The Kilimanjaro Safari. I love it. I could do it all day long if they would let me. Um, but Woody, your favorite, Woods, what would you say? I, I'm, I'm going to say this. Animal Kingdom, the first year we went, which was eight years ago, mm-hmm. um, and I had never been to Disney before, period. The first time I went, I was 30 years old with us. We're on our honeymoon. Um, Animal Kingdom, to me, is by far the best themed park, mm-hmm. I think. Uh, Magic Kingdom is like on a different universe. I think everybody needs to, you know, put that separately. Animal Kingdom, the amount of detail they put into that whole park is... Uh, uh, you. you you go in and you always notice something different. So for me, Animal Kingdom is like the adult park to go to. I feel like like you go through and like I don't the the Africa part, the buildings, the everything just looks worn and like I'm there. Yeah. You know, like how when you go to Epcot, you go to the different worlds. It's just different. Like this, you feel like you're going through the jungle and you see it. So I love the visual part of Animal Kingdom. Uh, for me, though, it's like, I don't know, I spend like two hours there. I'm good. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I remember the first year we went, we stopped in every gift shop. Everything we could do, we did. And now it's just like, we just kind of make a beeline mm-hmm. to the stuff. And like two or three hours, I'm good. Yeah. But like, after this visit, whew, Pandora, one, when they announced it, I was a little surprised because it was a Fox property, you know, like it was not a Disney movie. Um, Right. And when we were there last, we had heard rumors. We had sort of, you know, you see a wall go up and it says, pardon our mess. We're making dreams or whatever. Um, We had speculated, what are they doing? What are they doing? What are they doing? And then it certainly came out that next summer. Um, Yep. Yeah. Avatar Avatar. came out. We love the movie, but I was like, that's weird. Like, yeah. it's not a Disney movie. Um, and this was before they bought Fox. <laughs> so, right. you know, so for me, it was like, man, that's, I don't know about that. But like now, now going through that new part and the fact that Disney has in fact bought Fox. Oh my gosh. That addition to Animal Kingdom has completely made it a different experience for me. Like a whole different uh Gosh, I, I, it's hard to explain. Like Animal Kingdom before was very educational and wonderful and, and just the textures and everything else. But then you add this to it and it's like, okay, now I feel like it's a legit theme park and yeah. not a big zoo. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes. Um, so we did basically both of the attractions there. Um, the Flight of Passage being the second thing we did. And then we did the... Um, the river. The river. What is that called? The um, river. Man, see, this is how casual we are. We don't no. even know the rides that we went on. It's, uh-huh. it's the Navi River journey. There we go. There we go. So we did We did that. I loved oh, that, that. That would... Okay, so also, not that they would ever listen to this, but w- when we ride down to Disney, mm-hmm. we listen to Disney Dish, yeah. which is a fantastic podcast. It's like one Jim of our, and Lynn. It was one of our favorites. Mm-hmm. Like uh, honestly, it, it it made twelve hours fly by for us. So they had talked about this ride, and those and, guys would never get the names of anything. No, they're <laughs> absolutely experts. And you, you need to listen to them. But they they got me excited for this ride. I didn't mm-hmm. know anything about it. Like I knew Pandora had opened up, and we were looking forward to it. Right. But then like the river ride, I I just didn't. I wasn't in the like the no. Right. Right. But then they were talking about it, and animatronic. I was like. I'm really excited now. And then it did not disappoint. Like that ride blew me away. 
we are thrills and chills is how we basically rank the rides. So we are more chill. We are Pirates of the Caribbean. We Haunted are Mansion. Haunted Mansion. You know, we we love those dark rides that are just sort of put me in a boat and let me just ch- and just e- chill. Even Ariel's Grotto, when it goes backwards down the water, ooh, that gets me. You know, I'm like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> You're so lame. No, but we, we really do. Um, We really do appreciate the river journey. Those slower, like, just sightseeing rides. Yeah, let me cool off. Let yeah. me just sit here and float. And I did appreciate that ride for that purpose, number one. Number two, whoa. Like... It was beautiful. The All right, so- little bugs, the frogs with six legs that jump from, you know, leaf to leaf. And you can see the weight you know, of them hit each leaf. I thought that was my favorite part. The blend on this ride, the blend of projection, screens, lights, and animatronics is, it, the, you can just tell Disney is like making, like they're throwing everything they've learned mm. into these rides now. Like they're just, they're completely just so different than before. That they are wonderfully blended. Like it's not because if you do too many projections, you know it's a projection, right? It's a screen at that point. And it's like, ah, okay, good job, but you know, but when you add that and you blend it the way they did, I don't know. It just, it, I loved it. Yeah, I loved it. Now the only thing is that when we got there, we made we we went right for Pandora, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um. Because the rest of Animal Kingdom, like the safari, had a long wait, and we were like, "Huh, eh, we've seen the rest." And it was hot. It was hot. Our legs are tired. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's go straight over there. So we had already fast passed flight of passage for like six thirty that night, and so we got over there around four. Mm-hmm. I think it was about four in the afternoon, and so when we get there, we go straight to there, and then we saw the river ride had a forty five forty five minute wait. And so we like, all right, so we're going to do the river ride, get off that, grab a snack maybe, and then go to Flight of Passage. So we get in line for the for the river ride. And the, the queue, it took a while. Mm-hmm. Like, it was a long, it was a long wait. Like, it was 45 minutes, but it was a long 45 <laughs> minutes. Um, but one small thing I appreciated that Disney did, they put a drink cart. Was that, is that the first... <laughs> queue that disney has snacks in i wish we we need to find that out because it was, it was genius it was it they took everybody's money everybody <laughs> that's the highest i bet highest grossing just just snack cart in the park i remember telling the cast member that was working it like oh like, this is a fantastic idea like this is un like well done you're making me wait 45 minutes for a ride now i gave you extra four dollars and 25 cents for a Diet Coke. <laughs> so, yes, you got just a little bit more money out of me that you wouldn't have got before. But um, that that queue, when, when you walk in, it's under this hut, like where they, you know, uh, they woven the stuff. Mm-hmm. And it was very, just very immersive. Mm-hmm. That whole world is just beautiful, breathtaking. And you absolutely have to walk through it. You don't even have to go through the rides. Just walk through it and see it. But the, there was one thing about that queue that I'm not going to talk bad about anybody. I'm not. Because if they're listening to this, I don't want them to think I'm talking bad about them. <laughs> but I, I've got to say it. I, yeah, I've got to say it. So we were about a third of the way through the queue, right? And you know how it is, right? For those of you who have been to Disney, it, you're waiting in line and you just, there's like an etiquette, right? Like you just kind of mind your own business. You might strike up a conversation with another person, another couple, and you talk a little bit. But for the most part, you're just kind of doing your thing. Nobody wants to wait in a 45-minute line anyway, you know, so you just kind of like buying time. Well, there's this group of people, uh, thank God they were like 20 people behind us, uh, but they were playing this game. What is the game called? Heads up. Heads up. So they were playing this game in the queue, and it was like six of them. And my gosh, they were, they were the, if I needed to take like 
a com- if I wanted to video a commercial for Heads Up, <laughs> you know, and I you tell the actors like go overboard, like really, this game is the funnest game in the world. I want you to yell you as yell. loud as you can yell. Yeah, go action. That's exactly the way they were playing that game, and they played it the whole time. Oh boy! And so, you know, for us. I mean, thank goodness we were not right next to them. And I'm, you know what? Well done. You passed the time. <laughs> Good job. But for me, I am like a hermit. I'm at Disney. You know, if we run into like a nice couple like us, I love that. But like that, I was like, oh my gosh, get me on this ride right now. Because they were like super into that game. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that was, the experience was kind of funny. We didn't, we weren't mad. It was just like. Man, they are like, they are hyped up on that game right now. So, and they weren't even playing the Disney edition. Yeah. What's up with that? Uh, <laughs> so, I, so, you know, so after about 35 minutes of listening to these people play Heads Up, and the poor, poor, sweet babies that were trying to sleep in the strollers. Oh, nope. They no. woke up every child. They were a little bit over the top. Now, hey, like you said, they passing passed the, the time. time. They did their own thing. And that's. But- that's great. But so our first experience with this ride was 35 minutes of heads up from the group behind us. But, but heads up at volume 30. Yeah, they were like... Screaming, yeah. as if screaming was going to help him come up with the name of what he was holding I, on again, his forehead. It, it was like if you were filming the commercial <laughs> for this game, this was the group you wanted to hire mm-hmm. because it it was like it was almost like they, they, their life depended on this game. Yep. And yep. that's how into it they were. Yep. But uh, yeah, so after that, we got on the ride. We got and, on the ride. And it was beautiful. It was and beautiful. Immediately, you sit in, and it's just, and we had this nice lady beside us mm-hmm. who rode the boat with us. And we would, again, I'm not the type, I'm not going to talk. Like, you're going to enjoy your Disney trip. I'm enjoying my Disney trip. I'm not going to invade your bubble. But uh, it was just, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful ride. And the animatronic, uh, I don't want to ruin it by any means, but I mean, obviously, you can Google and look it up. Uh, it was just unlike anything you've ever seen. I think it's the best. I think it's the, the way best. The, her feet moved yeah. and her legs. Like, Everything. Even yeah. her her calf muscles were moving. <laughs> so as far as animatronic figures, I can't I can't no. find a better one. And it was the the ride was so peaceful and well done. And like I, I'm the type I don't need a deep story. I really don't. Like like the Haunted Mansion it really it doesn't really have a story. You're just going through a haunted mansion. Um, Pirates has somewhat of a story, but it's just pirates. Mm-hmm. You know, like you really don't need to have all this background. And that's what I appreciated with this ride. After coming from Galaxy's Edge, which we did another episode where like I felt like so uneducated in Star Wars for Smuggler's Run. For this, it was just nice. Mm-hmm. It was nice. It was like peaceful. And it was like okay, this is beautiful. They're going somewhere. We're, we're following the animals down the river to somewhere, and it's beautiful. I don't care where we're following. But it was it was great. Ooh, it was, yeah. Look at that bioluminescent caterpillar crawling up that really cool tree. You could go on that ride probably 100 times and find something new every time. Absolutely. So overall grade for the Navi River journey for you? Oh, A. Hey. Yeah. A almost A plus. I mm-hmm. mean, it was like if the line had been shorter, I would absolutely go on that ride again and again. I just could not. I couldn't wait another forty five <laughs> minutes after hearing a heads up. <laughs> well, I couldn't do it. So let's stay in Pandora and let's go over to Flight of Passage. So we fast passed this uh, when we were planning our vacation. We knew this was something we wanted to do. This was high on our list. Mm-hmm. I can tell you it. Didn't disappoint as far as thrill because when I put myself again on a ride like Smuggler's Run, like Everest, any of those sort of rock and roller coasters tower, you know, you're going to get me in that a little woozy boy. I need to go lay down in the resort. So for a thrill ride, yes, for me, and I'll let you speak as well for me as a Obviously, I liked Avatar. I thought the movie was great. I've seen it several times. I look forward to the sequels. There is no one like James Cameron who does what he does. Um, I appreciated, you know, that side of it. The story I thought was way too long. 
Um, I didn't care about the fact that I wanted to be paired up with a banshee. Like, just can't let me ride one. I'm like you. I'm, pa- I'm, I'm, I'm impatient, but I have patience beyond all reason in Disney. I don't understand it, but it yeah. just is a. It's if that, that happened outside Disney of dose. Disney. Park. Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay, so the whole scientist thing with watching all these monitors and then matching you with the numbers on the floors, like I was just over it. And of course, I love Disney, but I'll tell you exactly what I thought the ride was going to be. I knew that I was going to get on some sort of mechanical device, sort of like a motorcycle. I knew that I was going to have to, you know, sort of be locked in and and have these handlebars. And I knew that that was going to happen. I also knew that there was going to be a virtual reality where I felt like, like Soren, that you were going to see things. Um, I knew that I was going to have glasses on. I, I knew all of these things. I didn't know that I would never see the Banshee I was on. That was a little disappointing. I wanted to have this whole you know, you want to talk about a story? Okay, well then give me a story that I'm actually bonding with this pink and purple sparkly unicorn banshee that I wanted, which of course I didn't even get to see. I wish that we would have seen the head of our own banshee. I would have liked to have gotten off the ride and said, what color was yours? Well, mine was purple and blue. What was yours? Well, mine was yellow and green. And I would, I didn't feel like after all the story and the scientists, oh, we've matched you up. But because what was it? Because you can't really connect with the Banshee. We've given you a, like a surrogate avatar and like the genetic match. Get, I was so over oh, I've, it. I, yeah, I, I zoned out. Okay. I didn't have the story. So, of course, the ride was spectacular. I did have to close my eyes at one point because I thought, oh, please, Lord, don't let me puke on this dude beside me. Um, He's super into it. <laughs> oh, boy. And I also really appreciated the way that the bike like thing you were on breathed. Yeah. Um, I thought that was awesome. But again, for me, I'm going to rate the ride at a C because I am a girl and I'm girly and I want to see my Banshee. I want to see that it's pink and purple. You just want to ride a unicorn. I did. And I, I, I (laughs) just, I'm thinking if I'm on this thing, why can't I see its neck and head? (laughs) All right, so for me, <laughs> Sorry. I all right, you fast pass it, and I, I, this is not a complaint. I mean, it's actually like I mean, when you fast pass it, you skip the whole queue, right? Mm-hmm. But this is like one of the only queues that I kind of wanted to see. So we fast pass it, and you, ba- you, you really do like skip a ton of the queue. You could tell they built in a line for this thing, but like you're looking through this glass and you see the queue part, and you're like, oh man. Like, I kind of want to see that. Like, it's like this testing facility and all this other stuff. And it's like, we're going through the CMET hallway. And I don't know. Like, it was just kind of like, I wish they would have shared the Q experience for the Fast Pass people. I, listen, I, it, <laughs> I get it. We're Fast Passing a ride already. So, you're like the privilege. Well, you know, you, everybody knows who's been to Disney. If you're in the regular line. You see fast passers go by, and you're like, ugh. Mm-hmm. Even though you're one of the fast passers for another ride, it's right. fine. But like this one, I was like, man, I really wish the barrier had been down, or they redesigned it in a way where I could have seen the testing stuff that was happening in the queue. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that was one. Two, um, the the story again. I don't need to know everything, like. Honestly, like the river ride was absolutely perfect. But th- this one, I, I it, just, it was a, and I, I get why they do it. I think it's to space out the rides, you know, when they, when they're doing it, like if you're taking like, you know, six minutes to tell the story that gives the ride six minutes to get riders off or whatever, you know, but for this, it was like, honestly, halfway through, I was just like, uh, okay, I, I, I'm a link up. I'm a fly. Cool. You know, I, I just don't need to be, I don't need a book read to me about it. Like, I don't care. Like, I mean, I appreciate the effort put into it. The effort it unmatched. Like, it's it's the the graphics that even the floor was like motion where they could tell where you were standing on your number. And then they did the genetic thing where like, it looks like your DNA was, you know, that was very awesome. But then like, again, like it just, it took a while to link up. It took a while to, you know, kind of get going. (coughs) 
So, I don't know. I, I I just I guess my attention span is zero at this point. But when you finally get on the ride, um, it it does take a while. It took a while to link up for some reason. I don't know. I don't know if it's normal. Like it stayed at like thirty six percent, and then all of a sudden, I don't know whether they were waiting for the ride another ride to end or I don't know. But the, being a person that gets severe motion sickness, mm-hmm. like I knew going into it because we did Smokers Run that I'll probably get sick. But this was like the first ride where, like, I was really sad I get sick, you know, because this ride was. Like, I loved it. I loved the idea. The flying was just beautiful. And it's, it's, and I don't want to sound crazy, but like, there's at some points, it actually, like, it makes, it almost makes you tear up because you're flying this creature. And there, at some points, it feels like you're flying. It really does. It did to me. Like, I was completely bought in and my banshee was breathing. And when, when, especially the water part, I don't want to spoil anything, but. The water part was just, it was just some of the sights and the feelings. Like I was really into it. I, and I was so glad I was into it because I was not into Smuggler's Run. And then, which was surprising because I'm more sci-fi than I was Avatar. But after this, it was like, I'm going to go home and watch Avatar. And it was it, it just, the feeling was just beautiful. And I loved every part of it. I, I wish they had a motion sickness version for people that maybe was slightly less, you know, just kind of toned down because the drops is what, like, if if you know you get car sick, it's like the the drops and the, the sudden changes that really get you. And that's what, and I was just sad that I was getting sick because I loved the ride so much. And that I was, I was actually, start, I found myself leaning into it because I felt like I was really flying, you know. And then the guy beside me was absolutely fantastic. He was like this old dad. That had his family. He knew every term. And the, what is the people? The Navi. Mm-hmm. He knew the language. <laughs> he was yelling out terms. And like at one point. Keep in mind. like I, I've never met this man. Ever in my life. At one point we look at each other on the ride. With our 3D glasses. <laughs> and we're like this is awesome. And this is like. And he is like saying some Navi language. With his hand in the air. And it just completely <laughs> made my experience wonderful and so after it was done it was like it made me think that it was so it was such a our smugglers run was like a like a dirty sci-fi space battle right but this the a part of me was like man disney's got to be careful because this was so beautiful and so it transported me so much that there might be some people out there that get hung up on that. You know what I mean? Like I, cause I'm one of them that I, like I star Trek, like I, I want to be on that ship, the enterprise so bad, you know, but for this, like this, I felt almost that way. Like I, when I'm gonna walk out of this building and I'm gonna be in a gift shop. And it was kind of all of a sudden sad because they had done such a good, they did it. Like they, they did, they did it. They took me to another world for this ride. So for me, I would give it an A plus, but I just, I'm so sad I get sick. I I probably won't ever be able to do the ride again, but I loved it. Like it just, it took me to a place where it was like, it was beautiful. It was, it, it, you felt the world. And again, I didn't need to know the story linking up. I didn't care. I just wanted to fly and they achieved that sensation. Um, They nailed it. They nailed it. So we did eat. Um, not at the restaurant that is in Pandora, but we did have a vein pod. A Rice Krispie treat for those of you. <laughs> but now I have to say this. If you've ever had a Rice Krispie treat at Disney World, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Those things are, mm-hmm. they they are fantastic. This one was good. It's just hard to eat. Like I it was like, a, it was like an egg shape. Yeah. And it, was it was just like, I had about, you know, I got the fact that she called it a vein pod. I was like, Oh I, yeah. I didn't like the name. I did not like the name at all. I'm going to say that. But it was good. But like, I got back to the room. You remember I unwrapped it and I, and I held it in my hand. And I'm like, how do, oh, how do I bite, take a bite? I almost cut it in half because, but yeah, it was delicious. And the merchandise and, and all the gift shops there were fantastic. And mm-hmm. 
Yeah. We really enjoyed our time at Pandora. And when we had got, um, I guess when we when we got off the um, flight of passage ride, it, it was dark. And so yes. that was really exciting. Oh, it was um, so beautiful. We took a second. We sat down just to sort of get our bearings. And of course, us being weird motion sickness people, um, it hit me harder, I think, than it hit you. It did. Yeah. Um, I wasn't as bad on Smuggler's Run. I think you were Yeah, a that bit. messed me up a lot. But for... Because I just tend to take my eyes off the screen and what the heck that you're missing everything then. But I had, there was a point where I had to close my eyes because I was going to, there were a lot of drops Mm -hmm. in, in flight and that that'll get you. Yeah. And then I, there were points where, um, in the ride where, where the Banshee like rest on a log or rest in the cave. And I enjoyed that. I was Mm -hmm. like, okay, I'd like to sit here for another five or 10 minutes, you know, just like, let me just kind of take in the scenery but then you, he takes off and he's like... How do you like, know it's a he? A she. Uh, you don't whatever. know because you don't see it. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. A little, then, I'm still bitter. I just want to... I just imagine mine was pink and purple and I'm fine. Well, I, and, and again, this is my fault for not researching it. But going into it, we thought... And I don't know why we thought this. Because someone had told me, and I guess I believe... Believe everything everybody tells you. Someone's that when you... This is true. I yeah. thought when you got on the ride... That you were linked with a banshee that was specifically yours. Yeah. So whatever the hype was, people thought this thing, you get your own banshee, you can name it, <laughs> you get you get on this. And then I told Woody, you, I told you, I said, we get to, if if you want, we could sort of pay. And, I, I, and, and somebody told me it was going to be kind of expensive. But you can pay to basically save your banshee. Like yeah. you get paired up, you get linked up. Your banshee is your own banshee. No one else can have it. And then it's yours, which is like the movie. I get it. But then I was sad because I didn't even get to see what my banshee looked like, number one. Two, I wasn't even linked with one. I was linked with a random avatar person because they found a genetic match. Sorry. I get hung up on the dumb stuff. I And he knows that. But again... But we anticipated, we anticipated spending 50 bucks. We did to get a little like banshee. A printout of, <laughs> of like, this is your banshee. We no, promise not to let anybody else have the same color scheme. Yes. Yeah. I was so excited I, I did, about I, that. I thought that was going to be the case. Then I thought with magic band technology, the next time we ride Flight of Patch- pa- Patches, <laughs> Passage, I'll get on my same banshee. Yeah. She'll be waiting for that me and all her sparkle. That was not the case. No. So we were such lamos, but... I didn't do my research. Yeah, neither did I. It was fine. We don't. We're casual. So we got off the ride at dark and that was again magical we sat for a second Beautiful. and then we walked around the land we were able to take in all of the water features yeah. um you know the sound design in that oh you walk through that park and i'm talking pandora like we walked through during the day and it sounded one way mm-hmm. and then at night it obviously had a night like crickets and totally different totally different sound. like i just again their attention to detail was phenomenal and for me when they announced that they were doing avatar i was kind of like again what i said earlier was like that's weird it's not disney that's gonna be weird i absolutely proven wrong like that this is what that park needed i feel like and if they can build off of this and hopefully the next movies will be well they'll be great but if they do this in Animal Kingdom more, mm. oh my gosh. Like that, not only are you, you know, steps away from going on safari and seeing animals that we would never ever see. Like now you're going to like an alien planet, but it's still nature. Like they just, they blended every, it's so well, it's so well done how it's blended with nature and the the rocks in the sky, I, I'm not sure what they're called. Um, the but floating mountains. The floating mountains. Yes, that I, it just is beautiful. You walk in again, and it's just like oh, it it mm-hmm. takes your breath away. And the the everything about it, everything about the land. Like I I was so impressed, and that's coming from a person that was like, why is Disney like licensing this movie? Yeah, it was good. You know, is James Cameron. He's awesome. But like, well, you know, like they have like 
tons of movies they could do. Like John Carter, which didn't do well, but that's a great movie. I love John Carter. Um, So for me, it was like when I see it, when I saw it, I was like, okay, I I get it. I, I, I get why they pulled from this because it's such a deep world that they could just, you know, you could kind of not, you really could not see the movie and be okay and appreciate it. Mm-hmm. And I, and I, I think I liked, I liked that aspect where like, I've seen the movie maybe once or twice and enjoyed it. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't have to know everything to enjoy it. It was, just, it was a beautiful land. So I, I, yeah, I, I just wish I didn't get motion sickness. That's, that's my only, cause I would have gotten back on that ride and and I just I really see like Disney in about ten years. You could, they're gonna have to have therapy sessions for people as they leave some of these rides because they're gonna be go back to their real life and they're just like this stinks. I was on a banshee two days ago flying and seeing beautiful water and everything. Now I'm at a, a desk and you know so I mean I you know it's, it's so immersive. It's so different than. Haunted Mansion or Small World, it's so different in a way where you just like, your mind is like, it almost clicks there that it's, you know, like, oh, I'm here. I'm in a different world. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I loved it. I loved it. A plus. A well done Animal Kingdom in that edition. Yes. So, we didn't spend as long as in the park as usual. We sort of had the idea to go to Pandora check it out, ride the rides. And then we actually didn't even stay for the rivers of No, we light. were, but it, it, I don't know. By then, uh, I think we, we did get a toll whip. Um, <laughs> we did. Yeah, yeah, I got the King's Cooler, which was awesome. Yeah. The, uh, stra- what was it, strawberry? I had a coconut rum in it and mm-hmm. something else. It had and... like a strawberry sauce yeah. over the regular dole whip it, we'd never had it before and it was amazing but i we just did i don't know by then i think again when we ride these rides our heads are just kind of floating for a while right and then it always helps for us to sit in the room for a little bit as weird as that sounds like we sit down and then you know we're all just kind of just weird mm-hmm. until we sit in the room we got we kind of lay down for just a couple minutes regroup and then we'll usually walk Around the resort, and then we're okay. Yeah, and then then we're fine. But yeah, we didn't stay after that. We walked. We didn't. We went didn't. to Dino that we saw that Donald Duck had a. They, they had branded right that area. Mm-hmm. Um, compared to the last time, Dino Dash. Yeah, it was, I can't remember. That was I, the. That's the. Yeah, but it was like there. yeah, it's like Donald Duck is now the yeah head of the mm-hmm. that Dino land. They kind of revamped it a little bit, which we. Went. It was ghost town, though. Not was, not a lot yeah, of people I, were there. I don't there. know what else they could do with that. I, I hope they don't. I love that that outpost sort of gift shop up there, though. That's oh, that one of my favorites. Um, you know, I always tend to find something special in there. Yeah. Um, the Animal Kingdom, I think, was the only park to carry the Chip and Dale Halloween plushies, which I thought was sweet. Um, they are joined, <laughs> and they were really cute, but. Again, I love, I, I I do love the amount of time we spent in Animal Kingdom and for what it was worth. Um, if we would have had another park ticket, I think we would have gone back again the next day. Um, but uh, Pandora, that experience, you fantastic. Gotta go. gotta you gotta go. go. If you, because we, we do hear often from Disney fans how Animal Kingdom is like the one that they... They'll Skip. go to, yeah, and that they haven't gone in several years. Mm-hmm. This this is absolutely, you have to go to see this. Now, whether or not you can spend a full day there, I don't think you can. Like, I for us. Right. For us, um, I think about half a day, yeah. you can still do it. Like, you can go go on the safari, because that's, you, I think you have to, uh, and, then, and then go over to Pandora, and then kind of walk through the lands. And then that's that, that's about it for me. I'm mm-hmm. I'm good. I, I I love the again the visuals of the towns and the seeing the 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 rough buildings. Um, that that is nice, you know. But but I but I then I'm good. Then yeah. I, I'm kind of ready to go after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that'll wrap it up for us and this episode of Animal Kingdom. Any last words, Woody? Oh uh, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening. I'm Laura, and I just hope you guys have a great day today, a great evening if you're listening to this at night. And and, and if you're on your way to Disney. Oh, yes. You're almost there. You're almost there. You can Just do keep it. going. Um, you know, we, we love listening to longer podcasts yeah. because we listen to several Disney ones on the way down and thank God for those. Yes. They they helped pass that time if you were driving. Like Absolutely. It, oh, it was a godsend. So mm-hmm. yes. Yeah, so hopefully if you're listening to this on the way, yeah. Yeah, you're almost there. And you can do send it. us send us any questions you might have, any topics that you might want us to talk about. Um, we have a lot to talk about still. We look forward to having you back on our next episode.